Welcome to the Roto World Basketball Show. I am Von Delzell alongside Dan Titus of Yahoo Sports and Raphael Johnson of NBC Sports. A lot of injuries to cover, gentlemen. A lot going into silly season. But, of course, we need the debate right off the top. Who had the better dunk, Anthony Edwards or Jalen Johnson? Uh, insanity, man. I actually just read an article that in New York, Raphael, you might know this being a Knicks fan, but mm-hmm. there's a thing called squatters rights, and uh, people are going wild over right now. I would say mm-hmm. squatters have more rights than either defender on either of those two plays against Ant-Man and yeah. Jalen Johnson. Um, but, Dan, I mean, whew, what did you think? Oh, uh, I feel like if we're going on the like the classic dunk debate, if you take the still image of Jalen Johnson on Austin Reeves, like that was nuts on the chin. So, like, I feel like I got to give a slight <laughs> edge just for the poster, like the poster image of it. I feel like Jalen Johnson got it. But I mean, and that was like a Blake Griffin, like throw in the rim. Like, I mean, I feel bad for John Collins. He's got like a face laceration from it, like the memes. That they were both vicious dunks of the year, easily. Yeah, absolutely insane. I mean, Austin Reeves could probably take Jalen Johnson to court. Uh, but Rafael, I mean, Ant Man, I love the reaction from his teammates going crazy when he yeah. threw it in. Uh, which one did you like? Were you in the same boat as Dan with Johnson? No, I, I gotta go Ant Man. Um, I didn't know what happened at first because I was watching a different game and Noah Rubin was on the clock with me at the same time. He, he puts in the Slack message, Anthony Edwards, OMG. And I'm thinking he got hurt or something. Like, oh, here we go. And then I look on Twitter and see the replay of the dunk. It's like, wow. Like, <laughs> the, the the reaction of the teammates on the court, on the bench, yet A-Rod sitting behind the basket. You see his reaction amongst all the other fans there. I've got to go with that one just because of the physical contact aspect of it. And I don't know what John Collins thought he was going to accomplish there. Like, Maybe he <laughs> underestimated. I don't know, think he think he was going to take off. But he, yeah, because he, <laughs> he stuck, he jumped. And it's one of those things you get in midair, and it's like, I've made a mistake. And, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I got to go with Ant. I, I think they were both impressive dunks, two of the best dunks of the year. But, yeah, I got to go with Ant for best one. Yeah, I, I personally love Anthony Edwards, too. There's always something about a guy that just kind of throws the basketball in at the end. Even if it's not technically a full on dunk, um, you're not one of those people. Are it's you? Incredible. No, no, I mean, that one was the closest yeah. to being a but a lot of people yeah, who say I mean, that stuff have never dunked on a rim over an eight feet in their life, so I don't really want to hear that. Like, well, I've achieved nine and a half, Raphael, a matter of fact, <laughs> so I can say that. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, I absolutely thought it was amazing. I saw the dunk, I got the notification while I was at Walmart. And I felt like I should have told the Walmart greeter that they should be showing everybody that walks in, like, good afternoon, welcome to Walmart. Look at this Anthony Edwards dunk. Um, That's how impressive it was. So, um, yeah, that was fun. Fun way to start the show as well. Uh, Not so fun, though, in Milwaukee. There's a lot of injuries to cover today, but we'll start with the Bucs. And Giannis missed Sunday. He's out on Wednesday. Chris Middleton returned on Sunday. Bucs holding a slight one-game advantage over the Cavs in the division, Rafael. Uh, what do you make of the Bucks situation? Is anyone worth picking up right now? Um, I don't really think there's anyone worth picking up. I think if you had Jay Crowder, you hold on to him for a bit just because he's still starting since Giannis is out. But you're looking at someone who's primarily a points and threes guy. Um, if anything, in shallow leagues, you're looking for Bobby Portis. Like If he's available, you need to pick him up immediately because he's someone who's going to have value even after Giannis returns. So. I don't really think too much changes from a fantasy standpoint there. Yeah, no, good call there. Dan, are you in the same boat? Uh, Yeah, I mean, sure. If Bobby Portis is out there, he's been outstanding pretty much since Doc Rivers arrived. Like, I think it's like almost unlocked his fantasy potential there. But um, it, yeah, if you don't have Jay Crowder, I'd probably look at Malik Beasley, mainly just because of the Bucks schedule, not only this week, but next week. Like, I think that these are guys that can you can hold on to um, if Giannis continues to miss time. I mean, he's definitely a points and threes guy but he can surprise you with a few rebounds and maybe a steal or two so i would also take a look at malik beasley he's 35 percent rostered right now and bucks have three more games this week so you can definitely play him yeah widely available then at 35 percent. so that's a good call good name to throw in there as well uh rafael I'll go to you with the knicks because mitchell robinson uh as dan told us right before the show he may come back now within the next week or two uh, that's pretty big for new york who's trying to get healthy as the postseason gets closer 
Uh, what's your make on Rachel Robinson when he comes back? Is there someone to drop or hold on to? Um, I think we're kind of in a holding pattern just because we don't know what the deal is with OG Ananobi. Um, the elbow flare up, how much time he could potentially miss. Still haven't heard much on Julius Randle. Still going through non-contact stuff. So we don't know if he's going to continue on this rehab route, season-ending surgery. We don't know what's going to happen there. But Mitchell Robinson, I think he'll be good. He was someone I, I suggested people hold on to if they could stash him in an IL spot. Like, obviously, the start of playoffs are this week for a lot of leagues. So he won't help you right now or maybe even next week. But that championship week, you can get some rebounds and blocks. You know, he could really help there, um, even in, like, 15 to 20 minutes per game. So I think Isaiah Hartenstein, you hold on to him. Precious Achira, I think you hold on to him as well. But I don't think there's anyone that you just say, I have to drop this person immediately because there are other variables at play. I like that. I think, I like, I think Mitchell Robinson is definitely worth holding as well. And if he does come back with championship week, Dan, uh, that makes him a pretty appealing guy to be holding on to or picking up. Uh, what's your stance? Yeah, I think there's a good chance that we could see him probably by next week. I mean, the fact that he's been upgraded to taking full contact, like that's not something we've heard about Julius Randle. That's something we haven't heard about Joel Embiid. So, you know, I think Mitchell Robinson's a player that, you know, I've been looking around in various leagues and I think he's he's been dropped just because there's been so many injuries across the league. Like you don't have IL flexibility, like you got to make some bold decisions. So um, if someone's sleeping out on the waivers, I think I might scoop him up if you think you have a good chance in playing into championship week. You know, either it's next week or, you know, your playoff started this week and, you know, you're playing to the next round. But I think it's worth a flyer. And as, as Raf stated, you know, like with the, the front court, the way that it is, I don't think we're going to see Hartenstein play 30 minutes. Like, I think it's going to be a timeshare type of thing. And they also have to ramp up Mitchell Robinson for the playoffs, too. So he can be effective in, in limited minutes. So I think you should take a take a stab at it. I think the one person that's going to be affected by its precious Achua hasn't really been playing very well lately. I think it's kind of just been fading. So I would, I would expect Mitchell Robinson to take those minutes and uh, everybody else should be good. Don't job. Don't drop Josh Hart just because like Mitchell Robinson's coming back or anything like that. The new triple double King Josh Hart. No, of course not. Real. Why would you drop that guy? Uh, <laughs> but uh, in lighter news, a guy that uh, people may or may not have to have a tough decision on is Donovan Mitchell. Uh, he's got a nose injury now. He's going to be reevaluated in a week. Uh, we're talking about now missing possibly one of your top players on your fantasy team and the most important stretch of the season, Rafael. Um, this isn't the first time, though, he's been injured. 49 games played this year, so he's missed quite a bit. What's to do in Cleveland? It's a good question. Um, I think Isaac Okoro has played well as a starter. Um, so I think if you need someone to add, you take him, but it's not going to be something that you're going to make up for with one person. Like, you know, there's, there isn't one person on that roster who's filling in right now that you can just go out there and add and say, all right, I'll be able to make up most of what Donovan Mitchell brought to the table. Um, George Niang has been someone who's also been solid just because Max Drews has been out as well. Those are pretty much the two main names, I think. Uh, Karis LeVert as well. Can't forget about him. So I think he would probably be the biggest name you're going to search for. But beyond LeVert, I don't know. I don't really – I think you're in a tough spot if you were – if you had Mitchell – as one of your fantasy cornerstones, just because of the injuries right now. Yeah, I've kind of given up on uh, Karis LeVert as far as fantasy and embedding standards this year for, for six man of the year and all that jazz. But mm -hmm. Dan, um, do you like LeVert? Is it you on a core or anybody else? Yeah, I think LeVert's a good look, man. He's he's up to 63% rostered in Yahoo leagues, but that's only changed over the last like day or so. You know, after dropping a double double, like 23, eight boards, 11 assists. I don't know that we're going to get that every night, but he's definitely going to be the main person that's going to take over for Mitchell. He's going to do his best Mitchell impression, impression that he can. Um, but I do like George Niang, like just for the minutes that he's getting and what he's doing. He's doing a little bit more than just shooting threes and, and scoring. He's getting you a little bit of dimes and getting some assists in there, too. So, um, yeah, I'd be okay with picking up George Niang. I, I prefer him over Isaac Okoro. And I think you can just stay confident that Karis LeVert's going to ball out as long as Donovan Mitchell is going to be out. And we don't know how long that's going to be like this nasal fracture. He's probably going to have to get fitted for a mask and play with the mask that could be uncomfortable for him. So, you know, we'll see how long this might might hinder fantasy managers, but just the wrong time of the season to be losing Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, I hope Donovan Mitchell comes back for the playoffs and he wears a mask. Uh, could be a memorable run for for him or the Cavs uh, if he does some damage with that thing on.
Uh, but it's got to be all black, man. You got to make it look cool somehow. Oh, yeah. Um, let's. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're talking all about Eastern teams and their injuries. So it kind of shows you that there's probably one, there's one clear team on top of the East that's pretty healthy, um, but it's not the Miami Heat. Uh, they got so many injuries to talk. I mean, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, J Jimmy Fuller, Jimmy Butler is dealing with a foot injury, Jimmy Fuller, uh, Bam Adebayo, and a lot of other guys. Uh, so where do we start, Dan? I mean, uh, who are we picking up in Miami? Who are we dropping? I mean, this is probably the worst team to have players on for fa for the this week of fantasy. Yeah, I think you got to pick up Caleb Martin if you haven't already. He was one of my top ads for this week just because I was expecting, you know, the Tyler Hero absence ma mainly to be the, the reason why he would benefit. But then also Jimmy Butler still been going through this day-to-day -day thing. But now that Bam Adebayo is hurt too, man, like they just don't have that many bodies left. And then on top of that, Duncan Robinson's getting evaluated for back issue. So I don't know, man. There's just not many people left. So I think you got to start with Caleb. He's at 30% uh, rostered right now. So, you know, he's a guy that you could probably get in shallow leagues and it's worth it. Hit double figures in four of the last five. Rebounds well, shoots threes, definitely gets some stocks. He had four stocks in his last game. So I would prioritize him over other other options out there and he's widely available as, as i said yeah miami's offense i think is going to be in a struggle uh for the next few weeks here and now they're so they're solidified as probably a playing team uh in the eastern conference rafael not what we expected but i did think the magic were going to overtake them in division but i didn't think it was going to be this bad this fast yeah. uh, are you with dan here with caleb martin yeah i throw jaime Hawkins jr in there as well um just oh, because he's going to take on an expanded role um, I agree, Martin, in terms of the all-around production, I think he's a better pick. But either one of them, at this point, I don't think you can go wrong with those guys. Um, I mean, Thomas Bryant, I can't believe I'm talking about him in relation like fantasy <laughs> at this point in the year. But if Bam sits, you know, a one-night flyer might not be the worst idea because in Cleveland tonight, they're definitely going to need him um, just because you're playing against Jared Allen. They've got Tristan Thompson to bring in off the bench too. So – He's going to have to play some type of role tonight. Um, the thing about the Duncan Robinson injury is that Eric Spolstra said this morning that he's day to day. Um, but I think it's worth noting that this is their last road game of the week. They play at home on Friday and Sunday. So it's not as sketchy as it sounds. You hear him say, we sent somebody back home to see a specialist, but he's day to day. So it's not that, it may not be that bad, but we'll see. Like back injuries. Back and hamstring, just absolute hell, I think. So we'll see how long he's out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a reoccurring thing for him. And Miami, I mean, they're comfortable being in the play, and they've been there before and yeah. had success. They're always comfortable being the underdog. So uh, they'll probably just take these next few weeks to get healthy, make sure that they get a favorable matchup in the play, and hopefully be one of the top two that they can get the one game uh, and be in. Um, yeah. Let's talk about one West Coast team before we go back. One, to one note to that on Bam out of bio. I thought it was interesting. And I don't know, Raph, if you've been checking the injury reports or not, but they did um, They did promote Orlando Robinson from the G League. So I'm wondering, yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, they're probably not going to. Yeah, he's probably not going to play tonight. Yeah. Right. So I think Thomas Bryan's probably somebody that's going to, as you said, DFS, or if you need a streamer for a big, like he probably makes a lot of sense tonight. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a pretty pick or pretty name, but Raphael's given us some ugly centers this year in terms of uh, fantasy production. <laughs> They've came through a couple of them. They so work. Yeah. Thomas, they Thomas work. Bryan, it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, do the West Coast because uh, the Kings, a team that also uh, finds themselves in fighting for a play-in or playoff position, Mavericks right behind them. They lose Kevin Herter now. Keon Ellis has been starting. We talked about him a little bit last week. If you didn't pick him up last week, are we picking up this week, Dan? Um, I would take a flyer on him if you need some defensive stats. Like, he's not going to do much for you in scoring. But uh, for the stocks that I've seen, you know, I, I've seen names like Jonte Porter and even like Najee Marshall. Like, there's a bunch of these fringe guys that are doing a lot defensively. Matisse Steibel, um, that are widely available that if you need some steals and blocks, like, take a flyer on him. This dude had five blocks last game. Like, that. Clearly, <laughs> he's doing something right on the defensive end. So, like, if you can get a poor man's, like, Herb Jones kind of thing at this stage in the game, like, it's worth it. Take a flyer on him. Yeah. How about you, Raphael? What's your opinion? I'd agree with that. It's not like Herter was giving them a whole lot of offense on yeah. a consistent basis when he was out there. So, you know, I think we talked about Elliot Silver in the season when De'Aaron Fox was out. And it was basically between him and Davion Mitchell. 
it felt like Ellis had surpassed Mitchell in the rotation at that point. Um, because neither one of them is going to give you great offense, but I think when I mean, the guy blocks five shots from the guard position, like that's that's crazy, you know. So you know what they say, if you want to get on the court and stay there, play defense. And, you know, so I think he's in, in line for a good role here with Herter out. So I would definitely take a flyer on him right now. Yeah, interesting that Kevin Herter last year with the Kings averaged 15.2 points per game. This year, 10.2 points per game. Yeah. Uh, his lowest total since his rookie year. So when you say they weren't offering much consistent offense, Rafael, 100% true. Um, so Keon Ellis and the rest of them may not be a bad decision to look at what Sacramento has to offer. Dan, Tobias Harris, man, he hasn't been on – he's been on your bad list. Uh, it's not Christmas time, so I wouldn't call it a naughty list. But uh, Tobias Harris, if it was <laughs> December, he'd be on it, right? Yeah, he's a bad rapper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tobias, he's he's been – at least he's coming back. Like, he's going to play tonight. Uh, looks like he's available. He's just been so mid. It's not that he's been – I don't know. He's just frustrating, right? Like, I think we're – you had him early in the season. He was playing above expectation in terms of his efficiency and what he was doing. But I think he's back to being who he really is. You know, he's only averaging 16 points a game over the last eight games in March. Um, his free, field goal percentage is better than it was in February. But I fact, the fact that Joel Embiid's not back yet, he still has an opportunity to do something if he wants to be aggressive offensively. But that's the question. I don't know what version of Tobias we're going to get on a night-to-night -night basis. So if you have him, you hold him. Um, but I'm not excited about him at, at all. Like I'd, I'd actually feel better about Chris Middleton, given the fact that Giannis is out. He's now fully healthy and he's had time to ramp up. Like Chris Middleton probably looks like a better late season run guy than than Tobias. And these dudes are like pretty even in terms of their draft capital and, and such. So um, yeah, I'd have more faith in Chris at this point. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Raphael, how about you? I, I don't really know what to say at this point. You know, I. I've long held out <laughs> faith for, for Tobias Harris. I think he's still a good player, but I don't know. It just feels like he needs to have like a set spot within the rotation to go and get his. And that may be difficult at times when you have like Kelly Oubre is a bit of a wild card offensively, uh, Buddy Heald as well. So maybe he's still struggling with feeling out that part of the process, but simply put, it's go time. You know, that's a team that early in the year, fully constructed, had the look of a potential title contender based on what they did with that Harden trade. And now it's like we kind of expect them to be either seventh or eighth, you know, because I don't – besides Maxi, Ubre, I don't really know if they have the horses right now. Like for some reason, Mo Bamba is still their starting center over Paul Reed. Reed. I know Reed, Reed – yeah, that's the on, thing. Right? You know, he, he came on when he was coming off the bench recently, but when he was starting, he really didn't – inconsistent. So. I don't know what to tell those people, those good folks in Philadelphia, but you hate to say it's a lost season, but it really is starting to feel like it. Yeah. yeah. Right. The sixth season for, for Tobias Harris, Dan, and uh, I feel like it's his last. I feel like he's, uh, he's bound to be he, a Dallas he, he knows that. He knows that. Like the only two people that are really under contract right now are Maxi and Joel Embiid. That's by design. Like they're clearing the decks at the end of this season. man. Like They still have to sign yeah. Tyrese. So. Oh, that'll happen. That, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. They drove their own price tag up, foolishly, but it's <laughs> true. <happen>. They did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is true, man. Um, anybody, before we uh, move on to some silly season stars, uh, Dan, is there anybody that you think Philadelphia could go after this offseason? Are you as a fan that you've been looking at or thinking about, or is it too early? Uh, it's probably too early, but it sounds like Maury wants to go big game hunting. I just don't know how appealing it is going to philadelphia right now it might be i don't know but like it sounds like they're the names that i saw earlier on were like you know the paul george's and the Kawhi Leonard's of the world and like they're not leaving la so i don't know we'll see yeah, i don't know philadelphia is a fun place man i lived uh 20 20 minutes from there for two years and uh i enjoyed myself at some sixers game especially booing everybody that came out on the court it wasn't in yeah, sixers yeah. jersey <laughs> But uh, oh, the, fan, the fans know, are great, man. The product on the oh, court, yeah. different, different story. <laughs> hey, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a fun place, man. I'm, I'm ready for NBA playoffs. I'm ready for the start of baseball season. Uh, and hockey season will be happening too for the playoffs. So it's a lot to going on right now.
But we are closing on opening day, as aforementioned. And it's never too late to squeeze in another draft. So for those cramming right before the regular season begins, go ahead and grab your Roto World, Roto World Baseball Draft Guide. It's loaded with comprehensive positional rankings, projections, and player profiles to ensure your draft is success. Visit mvcsports.com backslash draft guide. Use the code BASEBALL24 to get 10% off at checkout. I actually bought mine yesterday at Walgreens. Uh, it was 11 bucks, so you could get it cheaper online. Uh, I'd recommend that if you don't want to go anywhere because, you know, it's windy as heck outside right now, guys, so I ain't <laughs> stepping out today. But uh, I will be doing some fantasy drafts, but for fantasy basketball, I'm out of it. So silly season starts for the people still in it. Uh, let's start with my Chicago Bulls. Kobe White missed the last three games. Torrey Craig's in the lineup now. I had has obviously been a pretty nice product for them all season long, Dan. Uh, what are we doing in Chicago? Is anyone worth picking up, holding, or dropping? I, I don't think so at this point. Like, Drummond was the fringe guy to pick up and, and add, and mm -hmm. he's now hurt. So, you know, I think right now if you're holding on to Kobe White, I have him in, in one spot. At least he's been practicing. He was upgraded, was at shoot-around. So hopefully we'll see him back in the lineup. Um, he's dealing with a hip injury. Um, but, yeah, outside of that, man, I just don't know what value you can really glean out of the, the Bulls. Like, they're just – too hurt to, to really find anyone that's like deep in the trenches to really help your fantasy team at this point in the season. Um, sidebar, the MLB started today. What? Yeah, <laughs> what? They're playing in Korea. But like, it, well, uh, but no one else plays. This is like opening day, yeah, like next week. Like what the hell are they doing <laughs> for fantasy sake? Yeah. I mean, like, it's just so weird. Yeah, but that, yeah, I digress. No, I agree. Um, I, 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 it was still spring training, I believe. Um, but I could be wrong, but I believe it's still. I believe training. I believe the, uh, the games, the Dodgers game. Counted. Yeah, it counted. Playing it counted. Korea. Yeah, right. It actually mm -hmm. counted. Um, yes. Well, it's still weird. It makes no sense. Yeah, because <laughs> there's still spring training games going on right now. Like as we speak, right. the yeah. Tigers and Twins are playing. Exactly. Uh, so. <laughs> Super confusing. Um, I have yeah. I have nothing to say about that anymore. Uh, Raphael, <laughs> so uh, what do you think about Chicago Bulls? Yeah, I agree with Dan. I don't really, at this point, I don't think there's anyone that you can necessarily go out and add. Um, what I will say is that Io Desumu has been probably one of the big pickups of the second half of the, of the post All Star break portion of the season. Um, lose Zach Levine for the year, and he's fit in quite well. And I think he's done really well with Kobe White out. Looks like Kobe's going to be back for that game in Houston on Thursday. But by no means are you dropping Io Desumu just because of what he can do as a playmaker and a scorer. And uh, beyond him, I think you're kind of watching for Alex Caruso. He seems to get hurt like every other game. Maybe that keeps Torrey Craig relevant in extremely deep leagues, but I don't really think so. I think there are going to be better options on other teams to stream the rest of this week and moving forward than Torrey Craig. Yeah, no, I, uh, I agree with that. I think it's very hard to pick up anybody in Chicago right now that's really going to make a difference on your team. Um, and, you know, silly season, hey, we need those guys that are going to go out there and give us two or three games that really make a difference. Um, man, I can't believe this game's counted. I feel like I missed out on some MLB futures, but you know what? I'm going to get over it, guys. <laughs> Shohei Tony had two hits. Uh, at least I'm not Jay Cronworth, right? And, or I'm at least I'm not Jay Cronworth's glove, I should say. A uh, little malfunction. Um, how about Toronto? Any silly season standouts there, Rafael? We know RJ Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly are both sidelined. For personal reasons, um, Dan mentioned Jonte Porter earlier. I think he's one. Um, Grady Dick, the rookie, um, he's another one. Um, Jersey Swap Society is going to have every opportunity to uh, kind of compete and, and show what he can do. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think those two are the. I'm sorry, I, I wanted to preemptively kind of put that out there for anyone else said anything. But, um, yeah, <laughs> I think those two guys are the main ones. Um, Bruce Brown, I don't really know what's going to happen with him just because of the contract situation going into the summer. Um, do you really want to risk, you know, him suffering an injury when you could possibly clear money off your books? I guess that wouldn't matter too much for Toronto's sake, but I kind of wonder if some of those other guys are going to be in for the occasional injury management game at some point. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I'm really glad that I took – I let you answer this one first before Dan could get to anything regarding that. Yeah, see, we that's already know. yeah. yeah. No, that just shows you're you're a veteran and you're mature, yeah. and uh, that's why you leave. So, 
uh, great job <laughs> there. But yeah, no, I uh, I've already passed around that picture multiple times. Uh, yeah. Ben, what's your opinion on uh, the Raptors right now? Yeah, I'm I'm avoiding Grady Dick for the moment. Um, I'm actually curious about Jordan Wara. Like he's hmm. he's putting in pretty good work over the last three games. Um, saw 20 minutes in both of them. Had 18-7 in the last game. He's he's doing stuff defensively. I think but I'm between him and Jonte Porter in terms of RJ Barrett's absence. Um, and I don't I, I have RJ Barrett in a couple spots, and I think I think you probably should drop him. Like I don't dealing with something like that, like I have no idea when he would come back. And if he does come back, awesome. Then you can try to pick him up again. But yeah, I think we're probably gonna see Bruce Brown, Jordan Nuara, and Jordan Wara and um Jonte Porter the rest of the way. So yeah, Bruce Brown, I'm not really feeling. He's not really doing much outside of scoring right now, which is kind of different. Like, that's not his game, really. Like, for D Denver last year, he was, you know, stat stuffer. So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll t if you're going to look at Toronto, look at the stat stuffers, which appears to be War and, and, and Porter at the moment. Yeah, I can make, I can agree with all of that. Raptors right now, obviously, they were a team, you know, four, five, six weeks ago, we were like, maybe they'll make a push uh, for the playoffs, but lost seven yeah, straight, yeah. 11 versus their division. They are out of out of it now excuse me so uh i would agree with a lot of those names you guys mentioned let's uh talk about a team in a similar situation but on the west coast the utah jazz they're two and eight in their last 10 games they are out of the playoff race playing situation uh and they got a lot of guys out jordan clarkson larry mark and uh john collins now uh so dan what's the make for utah is anybody worth picking up here yeah i'd probably pick up taylor hendrick's for the if, if you need a streamer, like as long as Laurie Markinen's out, like that's definitely going to help his 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 potential here. But um, you know he's gotten a block in three straight, a couple steals as well. Um, has some double double potential. So like I feel like Taylor Hendricks is the name that pops off to me. That's still widely available that you can scoop up that might be able to do something for you. Now that it doesn't look like they're going to be playing their main guys the rest of the way. Like I'm still surprised John Collins is even out there. Like mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't be surprising if they let start Walker Kessler tonight and then just kind of let him rock for the rest of the season. So yeah, as long as the vets continue to be out, definitely lean into the rookies. Fun fact, Raphael, I have one of my best friends convinced that Taylor Hendricks isn't a real NBA player from 2K. Um, we've been playing. He thinks he's been a drafted guy, like a made, a made up player, but it seems like it doesn't he, uh, but you pick him up in fantasy. Yes. Now. Yeah. I think him, um, Bryce sensible someone else. He hasn't done as much recently, but like Dan said, they're pretty much playing out the string, and there's no reason for them not to give those young guys every opportunity uh, to show what they can do. So I think he's someone else. Um, the guards, besides Keontae George, you know, I think he's going to be a shallow league guy just because of how how much he's been picked up already. So, yeah, it's all in on the rookies and Walker Kessler, who I think now they have no excuse not to start him um, and play him 30-plus. Yeah. So. Pretty much young guys at this point. Yeah, not something that all of us expected. Uh, Walker Kessler not starting many games this season. We were all pretty high on his defensive efforts and rebounding ability early this season. Uh, but we'll keep it on the bottom of the NBA. Uh, Detroit, Memphis, or Portland, Dan. We know all these teams, whether they have someone you could pick up or, you know, your team, you have players on your team that are playing against them, it's always a pretty good matchup to be looking at. So is there anyone on those three teams in particular you're eyeing up? Um, yeah, I think Delano Banton still can, you can rock with him as long as Jeremy Grant is out, which seems to be, it's probably going to be a while now. Um, surprised how much they're playing Deandre Ayton. I, I featured him in my, my Monday's article. Cause I was surprised at how the numbers that he's been putting up when it doesn't really matter. So it's funny that he becomes relevant when he's playing, you know, meaningless basketball, but, um, yeah, so Delano Banton, I like Scoot Henderson. I think you could take a look at, especially in points leagues. Head to head, it's a little bit tough just because he's so inefficient and there's a lot of turnover problems. But, you know, just given the opportunity ahead for him, I think he's going to get better. And from the Pistons, I would say Simone Fontecchio. He's injured right now. He's day to day. So if he plays tonight, you know, he's got a good schedule the rest of the way. So, like, I think you could be pretty confident in him. Um, who else? Maybe Marcus Sasser, but it's probably too deep yet. Like, you'd have to wait for Cade Cunningham to be ruled out for him to really get the run that you know, to be yeah. fantasy relevant, like the way that he should be. Yeah, we've still been waiting on Marcus Sasser, but I agree if uh, Cunningham gets put out for the last end of the season, which is something we talked about at the beginning of this year, whether or not Kate Cunningham would play mm -hmm. the final month of the season for the Pistons when they're out of it. So 
that's going to be a very interesting um, situation to be keeping an eye on here. Rafael, what's your make in Detroit, Memphis, or Portland? Anybody that you're looking at for silly season? Um, Maybe like a G.G. Jackson in Memphis, if he's still available. I think he's one name. He seems to be one of the few guys who's managed to stay healthy down there. So, I mean, I'd also keep an eye on Chemezi Metu. They just signed him to a 10-day. By no means am I advising anyone to go pick him up right now, but I think he's someone that, hell, they, they really don't have too many other people to play. Like, I don't think – I think I, as surprised as Dan was about DeAndre Ayton, I'm surprised about Jaron Jackson Jr. playing as much and as Desmond he has Bain. down the stretch here. Yeah. Like, Bain, I understand to a certain extent just because of the amount of time that he missed. Uh, you kind of want to let him work off some of that rust. I'd expect him to get shut down too, you know, at some point just because – I don't care what they say about the culture not wanting to shut guys down. There's no point. You know, I think you can improve your draft odds. I know this isn't the most highly thought of draft class coming in, but what the hell, man? You might as well do it. Like in the case of Portland, they could have two lottery picks uh, if things break the right way. So some of those guys who are established, you know what you're going to get. You know, either limit their minutes or just don't play them on certain nights. Yeah, no, I'm in total agreement. So you don't want to risk guys' injury more or ruin their following season. Put yourself in doubt. and uh, Or you don't want to be like DeAndre Ayton where you make all this money and you sleep on an air mattress rather than a bed, and that's why you say your shooting hasn't been as strong. Uh, so just, you know, think wait, about it or get you, a good Wait, wait, wait. You didn't hear that? You didn't hear that? No. Yeah, yeah. When he moved to Portland, oh, he said like he didn't get an air mat, he didn't get a bed yeah. for a long day. He just had an air mattress, so that's why like he hasn't been as good this season. Yeah, let's, I mean, let's move, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm this man is yeah. I mean, I'm like, who, who, I can't take it. I can't take it. Still on an air mattress, mattress bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like I got, I have an air mattress. I have two air mattresses. I don't. I have a real bed. I sleep on. Uh, but I have two air matches for people that come over, and it's like yeah. I spent one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars on an air mattress, and it still will go flat. So, how much <laughs> are you really spending on an air match for a seven foot, three hundred pound man, where this thing is not going flat? Like, just get a bed. <laughs> Makes no sense. But, if he doesn't uh, have right, a bed, right, well, right. how's the rest of his crib furnished at this point? You know, like, what does he not have a couch? Does he sit on the floor in a lawn chair? Like, what is he doing? Beanbags, come over here for right. beanbag party. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm done. I was about to say something else, but we're on air. Come we on, won't man. say that. Uh, let's, yeah, let's come on, man. Bilal Koulibaly, done for the season. Uh, DeAndre is <laughs> not, though. How do you evaluate Koulibaly's rookie campaign, Rafael? And um, what do you think season two will be like for him? I think we saw flashes of what he can do, um, de especially defensively. Now, there's still work to be done offensively. Um, but let's be honest, the, the situation in D.C. just stinks. Um, I don't I don't think they bargained on being this bad uh, after they made the Bradley Beal trade. And, yeah, I, I think he can be better. I'm interested to see what happens with his summer not just the skill development, but also the Summer Olympics. And does he make that team for France? If he does, what type of role does he have there? Um, but I think he, he's got the makings of a good player. I just worry about the, the franchise he's with and whether or not they can properly develop it. Yeah, Dan, what's your uh, your thoughts, too, on – that was pretty good. What you got? That, that, was, that was a mic drop because that's like – that's, I mean, not saying that we're comparing him to Wemby, but like Wemby landed in the best situation to yeah. grow developmentally, right? Whereas like Cool Bali is dealing with Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma. Like, have you have you watched stuff. Johnny Davis play basketball? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know this front office wasn't there when they drafted him, but they use a lottery pick on that young man. I hope he turns it around, but it's like. This is why we can't believe in your franchise when it comes to developing players. Because, man, uh, go, go ahead. Shot, I'm sorry. His, his shot, his shot is broke. Um, but like, I feel like to to that point though, like I think Koulibaly's rookie season to me was a bit of a, I would call it a disappointment. Like I think it was, mm -hmm. it was somewhere along that line because I never really came around to him in fantasy. Like I know. Early in the preseason, a lot of analysts were like, oh, this guy has a lot of tools. Like, 
he's very young and raw, but like he has a fantasy appeal to him. And like, I just never felt we got a chance to really actively put him into our lineups and be confident about it. Um, this season was over once Jordan Poole just started playing. Like, I mean, he's making so much money and he's just not a franchise player. So like mm -hmm. the season was over before it started the way that we saw him actually play into this lead role. Um, so going forward, man, I think Raph's point is great. Like let's watch him in the, hopefully he plays in the Paris Olympics. He can get some real world experience, not playing with the Washington wizards, hopefully learn some things and then come in the next season. Maybe this team looks a little bit different roster construction wise, and we can see a little bit more from them. Yeah. I felt like the focus was off in Washington uh, early on in the season. I mean, one of those highlights obviously went viral with Jordan Poole. So yeah, I will be excited to see what so he many. does. Uh, this off season with the Olympics and everything too. That's a, that's a good point to uh, point out. But Dan, don't blame Jordan Poole for the season he had. Man, he sleeps on a water bed, so that's different. Uh, you know, his back's not the best either. But uh, just as a reminder, find all your favorite NBC sports shows on Amazon Music. Just head to amazon.com backslash NBC Sports. And if you also need to shop for water beds or air mattresses, you can go to amazon.com as well. Uh, the rest of the week twenty one schedule is a big one. We got a lot of teams playing three games. So Dan, I'm sure you have a load list, a long list, I should say, of names to give us. Uh, why don't you do that? We got to get a sponsor for for some kind of like mattress company or something. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know any of the mattress, I don't know any mattress companies, but that's like the fifth mention today. Like we got to get something. Um, yeah, but for the rest of this week, though, I love the Pelicans schedule. Um, that's a team that I also like going into next week. So I would load up the chop. I would I would load up the chopper on Larry Nance Jr. Like I think he's probably the most under rostered player that will probably help you in fantasy. Jonas Valachunas is is trending down. The more that they play small against certain teams, I think we're going to see Larry Nance, you know, kind of ball out. I'm assuming he stays healthy, that's the only like risk with him. But when he plays. This dude's a permanent beast, and he fills up the stat sheet. So I would definitely prioritize him. I also said Naj Najee Marshall earlier. Um, he's kind of a poor man's kind of do-it-all kind of guy, but, like, he had he has four steals over his last couple of games. He threw that nasty alley-oop to Zion Williamson on Tuesday night. So I think he's going to continue to get 20-plus minutes in this in this rotation. Um, I'd also be looking at the Bucks players. Like, the Bucks have a really good schedule going into next week, so they have three games left like the Pelicans. Um, so I would definitely target, you know, the Beasleys of the world, as 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 uh, Raf said earlier. If Portis is available, absolutely got to scoop him. Um, other teams, the Miami Heat have a pretty good schedule. So you know, I think a lot of the the guys that we talked about already, the Caleb Martins, the Jaime Hawkeses, like all of these guys, I think are going to be really important towards not only this week um, but going into next week. Yeah, I will note, I was going to say the Pelicans were the team that I definitely made a note of because I've been paying close attention to uh, division odds in the NBA, and I'd really need the Mavericks to catch up with the Pelicans to cash a nice uh, four-team parlay. So the Pelicans play the Pistons twice next week, and I thought, oh, well, I'm not looking good. Uh, but fantasy standards, that's a good matchup right there. Yeah, it's an awesome uh, Rafael, yeah. what are you looking at? Uh, do you like any Pelicans players, or is there some other teams or players you're looking at? And I think we mentioned most everyone. Uh, Keon Ellis, you mentioned earlier, Sacramento plays three games the rest of this week. So it's a good runway for him to kind of establish something, especially with the defensive stats. Jonte Porter, Jordan War, Dan mentioned earlier, those are two other guys with three game weeks the remainder of this week. So I think those are guys, I think we pretty much touched on everyone in terms of guys to pick up. Um, in terms of players to drop, I think you kind of have to ask a question about Vasily J. Micic, as well as he's played in Charlotte. They only have one game left the remainder of this week. So that may be a, sh a short term move that you kind of have to make there. Um, Dallas, they're also at one game the remainder of this week. So those fringe guys like a, um, a Dante Exum, even though he hit four three pointers last night, probably not going to rush out to add them. Yeah, those are really good points right there, especially the last two, because <clears throat> we mainly talk about the guys that we're picking up, but. Yeah, there are uh, definitely good options worth dropping too when teams only have one game the rest of the week and you can go around and pick those guys right back up uh in a few days as well if you need them again and last week if anyone caught uh, our episode you guys talked about a uh, draft you guys are both partaking in i'm assuming it should be done by now right 
Mm, All right, and uh, how are we feeling about it, Raphael? You like your team? You hate Dan's team? That's that's what I'm getting out of this, right? That that's how I feel. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, obviously it, the name of the draft is like a way too early mock draft or what have you, and it is way too early because they're still focused on this season. Not really like, well, the actual name of the draft is why are we doing this? But it's like you're focused on this season <laughs> as opposed to next. I haven't really done any research, but. Yeah, it was, a, it was only a 10-rounder. Um, I liked who I wound up with. You know, I'll run down the list. We got Wemby first overall, Maxi, Cat, Drew Holiday, Miles Turner, Bradley Beal, CJ McCollum, Herb Jones, Nas Reed, and then closed it out with Josh Hart, the final pick of the draft. So killed that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I did pretty well for okay. not knowing what I was gonna do beyond Wemby. Like I knew once my name came up for <laughs> the first pick, like yeah. We're going to go Wemby, just kind of see how things play out. I think that's going to be one of the biggest questions going into draft season in the fall. Uh, where does Wemby go? How does that impact drafts throughout the, the world, I guess you would say. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with who I wound up with. Yeah, I like that uh, Let team a lot. I would say the only person on there that I personally wouldn't draft would be Bradley Bill. Uh, I'm not yeah. super excited about him at all, but – if that's the worst person you're going to give me, I like that team a lot. If you can get him at the end of round six, which I think is going to be impossible once we hit the fall, that's I think that has the potential to be a steal in fantasy. That's I think that's a good yeah, point. We, we, like he played because of the injury concerns, like people are probably going to be off him. You could probably get him yeah. like round six, round seven next year. That's going to be a that's going to be a huge value um, if he can actually stay healthy. <laughs> Yeah. How about your team, Dan? Uh, you want to run down your list and we'll tell you who, who we think about it? <laughs> this, shit, this shit is gross, man. And I will say <laughs> that there were points I have a problem with the methodology of how we were drafting because we're covering multiple time zones. The clock never went off. So if yeah. you didn't have your, your draft set up and I probably should have set my cue in certain instances, but the clock ran out on me and I want to draft some shit players. But that <laughs> being said, I got Steph. I got Damian Lillard, Fred Van Vliet. I'm okay with that. I was I, that was that was targeted. I wanted to get a lot of points, threes, and steals, and, and uh, free throw percentages off the bat. And then shit went haywire. Macau Bridges. I'm okay with that in round four, yeah, um, just given like what he has potential wise. But then it was like Vucevic, John Collins, uh, Nurkic, Neesmith. Clint Capella and Jonas Valachunas. Like, I, I don't know what the hell happened in the back end of that. There's just no young youth on this team. This is like a team from Man. 2019 or something like that. Like, nah, this is this it this ain't it. Hon so honestly, too early, your, your too early team, to be drafted. Your, <laughs> your team reminded me of watching Colorado State and Virginia last night. Like, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> yeah, that team that team is ugly, man. I don't like it at all. I would never draft a team like that ever again. So they caught me slipping. I'll have my cue set up going forward. Um, but yeah, that's that was bad. That was real bad. Sorry, but I do like the start of that team, the first three rounds personally. Um Rafael, what do you make of it? And um do you agree round four is where everything went wrong for Dan? Yeah. I, I you know, I would probably say <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'd probably say round <laughs> six, actually. I think Bridges yeah. in round four is okay. Uh, Vooch in round five is the same because that's pretty much where you expect their values to be in terms right. of fantasy production. But after that, like my John Collins thoughts are not dictated really? by what happened to him the other night, but I don't think you can draft him in the sixth round. Um, no. And then Capella, I know I know there are a lot of people in the fantasy industry who try to talk themselves into a Kongu taking that job. It hasn't happened yet. So I think we should kind of stop doing that. That being said, Capella, I think he's got more promising years behind him than ahead of him. Valanchunas, you mentioned the, the recent rotation struggles. I think he's going to be a free agent in the summer. If not, if he stays in New Orleans, you got to think he'll be like a prime trade candidate because yep. if you can play Zion at the five and pair him up with Larry Nance for that defensive help, that's more palatable, especially to have another playmaker on the floor in Zion from a position that other teams may not be used to having to defend like that. So, 
Yeah, I think Valanciunas and, and Capella were the biggest head scratchers from Dan's draft. But I do get his point about the, the clock where we had five hours and there was no time for pauses for sleep just because everyone's all around the world with people like Australia and Philippines. And yeah, wasn't the most, wasn't the best situation. Yeah, I mean, if I would have woke up and got drafted John Collins, I'd be <laughs> That's pretty what upset, happened. too. So. I would have thrown my phone. I'm like, what the fuck is this? John Collins, man. <laughs> this Old bum on my ruined. team. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's okay. Then. There's better days ahead of you. Uh, but, you know, better <laughs> days behind some of those players you drafted. Not a big deal. Before we get out of here, though, I do want to, both of you guys, and I'll start with you, Dan, because I know you're all amped up right now. So you'll be speaking from the heart. Um <laughs> Give some fantasy advice for anybody that's uh, going into the playoffs this week or in the playoffs already. Uh, I would pick up Trace Jackson Davis. Jackson Davis, if you haven't, um, he's really just been phenomenal for the Warriors, and I think he's going to continue to shine. Double-double, he gets you blocks, very cheap asset that you can get on waivers. And for some reason, TJ McConnell, friend of the pod, always seems to come up around fantasy playoff time. Love the Pacers' schedule the rest of the way. He's continuing to thrive even in a bench role. Like he just does all the things you want for fantasy and head to head leagues. So I would definitely get him. And the surprising sleeper of fantasy, I think, is going to be Peyton Pritchard. Because the Boston Celtics have such a, a wide gap between them and everybody else, I think that we're going to start to see their main starters start to get some rest. And anytime they do, Peyton Pritchard usually cooks. Sam Hauser is hurt. I think he's going to be their main bench guy. Going forward, if you look at their schedule, man, they got names like Detroit. They got some. They're playing some bums coming up. So, yeah, yeah. I would, I would prioritize getting him because I think he's actually going to be a TJ McConnell light type dude for fantasy the rest of the way. Yeah, Celtics on pace for sixty three to sixty four games, but along the way, they won't have to play very hard for some of those teams. So I'm with you. Uh, great list of names there, Rafael. It doesn't have to be names. Could be advice on how to. Uh, you know, pick up or drop people or what to do. But uh, fantasy advice for this week and next week? Hmm. That's a good question. I think what I would say is try to free up a spot on your roster. Not like an empty spot, but maybe someone that you can afford to drop and kind of adjust and change your strategy for later in the week, depending on what you may need, especially if you're in a category league. Um, you may have a need for steals or blocks. Like we mentioned earlier, like a Keon Ellis could be more valuable to you later in the week than maybe at the start of the week. So I think maybe having a little bit more roster flexibility towards the bottom of your roster can really be helpful in category leagues for the playoffs. Yeah, especially, I mean, that would be a thrilling feeling to uh, catch somebody slipping on our Saturday or Sunday because you got more, they don't have any ad drop yeah. and you pick mm-hmm. up a Keon Ellis mm-hmm. and get you four steals and that's what, Secures yeah. a bag. Don't don't use all of your ads and drops on Monday. Like that's that's a novice move. So don't do that. Yeah, yeah, agreed, hundred percent there. So, uh, guys, another great episode as always, and we'll be back next week to cover uh, everything people need to continue to try and win their league, including not picking up Johnny Davis. All right, so Rafael Johnson, Dan Titus, Von Dell's out. It's been a lot of fun today. Producer Adam Wise behind the scenes. Thank you, people. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week.